This is Hongai, a port city in a mining district north of the Red River Delta. We arrived here on the morning of June 16th, one week after the latest US air raid. Before then, the city was attacked on May 10th and June 7th. In 1968, when I last visited the place, after four years of bombings, Hongai had suffered little damage. Then it was the coal fields and the small mining towns up in the mountains that were bombed the hardest. More than 10,000 people lived in Hongai. Most were miners and their families. They lived in small one-family houses in rows along the streets or in two- and three-story apartment houses. This was Hongai's drugstore. Now the staff has dug a tunnel down through the wreckage to the medicinal stores. They are trying to save what was not destroyed in the bombings. Here stood a movie theater. This was the bus terminal, where the waiting room used to be, there are now just the bomb craters. The marketplace, where Hongai's inhabitants bought vegetables, fish and poultry, was situated near the central town. A large number of bombs were dropped here in the three air raids in May and June. We were told there were no heavy industries in Hongai. Nguyen Van Vu, a tailor, told what happened the afternoon of June 7th when the American planes came. He said the bombs fell right onto the air raid shelter where his neighbor's family was sitting. Only the father is left now. His wife, four children and one apprentice who was living with the family were killed. The news bulletins released by US military headquarters in Saigon in the days after the latest large-scale air raid on Hongai on June 9th said fighter bombers had struck the coal storage areas around the city. We saw a totally bombed out city. The port and the cranes adjoining Hongai, which we visited, but couldn't film, had not been bombed. Though the city was in ruins, those that remained believed the American planes would return with new loads of bombs. This is Eric Eriksson of Swedish television. There were several bombing raids during the two weeks in June when I was in North Vietnam. We saw the planes and heard the explosions, but were never close to a target that was being attacked. New types of bombs are constantly being used against North Vietnam. This so-called perforation bomb is one of the newest. According to North Vietnamese officials, it is being dropped on cities. Every bomb canister contains a couple of hundred perforation bombs. The canister opens in the air and the bombs are scattered. Dr. Nian Long said, in the attack of the village of Luang Dong, perforation bombs were mainly used against the civilian population who were asleep when the attack came. Here are some fragments from a perforation bomb. Here is one, and here is another, which we have uh, removed in operations. A characteristic of the perforation bomb is that it releases very small fragments, which produce very severe injuries, such as the 
injuries on the girl, Tam's head. The textile city of Nam Dinh, out in the Red River Delta, is one of the most severely bombed cities. During May and June, Nam Dinh was attacked repeatedly. This was the large textile mill where production was in full swing last spring. Now all that remains are twisted skeletons of steel and fallen walls. The residential sections of Nam Dinh have been bombed as well. Parts of the town have been reduced to ruins. During one air raid, more than 100 heavy high explosive bombs were dropped on about 30 parts of the city. Now the population is being evacuated from Namden, as is the case in other bombed cities. Many of the evacuated will not have homes to return to in Namden. This is Erik Eriksson of Swedish Television. Before April 16, 320,000 people lived in Haiphong. But since the air raids began, some of the population has been evacuated. Though air raid alerts sounded daily in Haiphong, life continued almost as usual. One need only walk a few blocks from this heavily traveled street in the city center however, to arrive at the areas where the American bombs were recently dropped. In recent months, Haiphong was bombed repeatedly. Large residential areas in the central parts of the city were destroyed. In this residential district, 700 families lost their homes in one single raid on the 16th of April. Many of the homeless return daily to the ruins in which their relatives were killed. Pham Thi Min lost her entire family, her husband and two sons, in this area of Haiphong. She said, there are no military targets here, just working people and housing areas. Why did they come with bombs to kill our people? My husband was killed. My 16-year-old son was just a schoolboy and he was killed too. I hate the aggressors very much. I could kill them. They destroyed our happiness. I can't stand it any longer. Small villages also have been hit. Phuc Lok is near Haiphong. On the night of the 16th of April, the American B-52s arrived. 142 bombs were dropped. 121 structures were destroyed. 63 people were killed, 61 were injured. Most of those in the village wore the white headband of mourning. The North Vietnamese would not allow pictures to be taken of the port area or industrial sections of the city. We saw no damage on the harbor area. Government spokesmen admitted the bombing was causing difficulty in industry and in the economy. But repeated previous public statements that it would not weaken their will to resist or affect the outcome of the war. This is Eric Eriksson of Swedish Television.
Rice is North Vietnam's most important crop. Most of it is grown here in the fertile Red River Delta. And it's here that the majority of the country's population live. Throughout the entire river delta, there runs a widespread network of irrigation canals, regulation dams, locks and dikes. This irrigation system is a matter of life or death in the river delta. It provides the rice fields with a constant supply of water, even during the dry season and the comprehensive system of dikes protects the lowlands against floods when the river rise during the rainy season. This dike runs along the Dao River, one of the branches of the Red River in the Delta province of Nam Ha. Village officials said the dike was attacked by American bombers on June 18th. We arrived here on June the 23rd. We saw two places about half a mile from each other that were bombed. At the most seriously damaged site, the dikes were broken. There were several deep bomb craters on the dike. Next to it, there also were a large number of bomb craters. We were told that eight planes made a strike. Around 50 bombs were dropped, according to the village officials. Repair work was underway when we visited the bomb site. People were digging away earth in order to get at deep cracks. Village leaders said the new earth used to fill in the bomb craters was looser than the surrounding earth. This means that the repaired sections are softer. If the high water becomes torrential, as it did last year, a repaired site can give way. The dike on the river Dao protects an area containing 12,000 acres of rice fields. 70,000 people live here. If the dike collapses, they will be confronted with flooding and the loss of their fall harvest. Despite denials in Washington, the North Vietnamese are afraid that the dikes are one of the targets in President Nixon's bombing offensive against so-called economic targets. This is Eric Erikson of Swedish television. 